Hi, I'm Danny Helbom. I'm a Christian artist, have been painting for the Lord for the last oh, four decades, about 40 some odd years by now. And what I'd like to talk to you about is how the Lord has used me and what He's done in my life. And by doing that, it's not so much talking about me as it is that maybe you can relate to some of the things that I'm saying and you'll have a better understanding on how the Lord can use the talents that you have. When I first became a Christian, um, I was doing some paintings, but they were paintings for like uh, florals and landscapes and that sort of thing for a couple of galleries. Uh, I didn't do any Christian paintings because most of it involved um, people and faces and that was not my area of expertise. I mean, you know, I, I really was not that good at doing people, so I stayed away from that. So I really didn't know what to paint for the Lord. I was just painting what I thought was beautiful pieces of art. And one day I was driving back, matter of fact, at this, at this point I wasn't even doing art shows. I was doing some paintings for some gallery, um, but that was like a sideline thing. It wasn't enough money for me to live on, and I had a family. And so I was working at a, um, a store that was about 45 minutes away from me. And on the way coming home this one evening, um, I just started getting filled with the Spirit. I mean, it was just overwhelming. I mean, I was just like, I was crying. It was, it was so beautiful. You know, you just get the t tears of joy, and that's what was coming down. And I was just, it was just like a waterfall coming down. And by the time I got home, I just went straight down into the basement where I was doing some of the paintings, and I fell down on my knees, and I just said, Lord, I said, you know, you're so good to me and you bless me so much and you love me and I, I feel your love so much, let me give something back to you. And I heard the Lord say, use the talent that I gave you. And when I say that, I don't mean like it bounced off the walls and I could hear it echoing all over the place. It was that small inner voice inside you. You know when you hear it, you know, the Lord just speaking and you just hear that voice and it's that small still voice inside you. And I heard him say, use the talent that I gave you. And from that point, I started doing some paintings uh, for the Lord. And it, was, it would take me probably the next two hours to explain the first painting that I did. It was such a miraculous thing. But you get, when you do that, when you give to God, you can never outgive God, number one. But when you give to him, he always takes that gift and gives it back to you. And number one, that, that's, that's the nature of our God. He's a loving and giving God. So it's just his nature to give back to us. He wants to do that. But he's also showing us how to be more like him, how to be more like Christ. And the fact that everything we give him, he takes it and multiplies it and gives it back to us. And that's what we as artists do. The Lord gives us a vision whether it's a, um, a beautiful scene, whatever. He gives us a vision, and the visions that he gives us, they are never meant to be for ourselves. Matter of fact, the Lord mentioned that to me. Uh, again, that small voice inside, he said, anything that I give you is not meant for you alone. It's meant for his people. In other words, so when he gives you a vision, like all the paintings that I've done, you know, it's, he gives me that vision, I paint the paintings up, but they're not paintings that are meant to be painted for me. They're for you. It's for his people. And that's the bottom line of all of this. So again, you, you, as we give to God, he gives abundantly back to us. It's showing us and teaching us that the gifts that he gives us are meant to be given out as well, not to be kept. And matter of fact, one painting I did uh, now, he told me this early on, and you know, unf unfortunately, as human beings, and I have to be one of them, um, even though the Lord teaches things, sometimes it, if we don't stay on top of it, we lose it and we forget, and he's got to reteach us again. And this happened, um, oh, many years ago. Uh, I did a painting, it's called Welcome Home. Now, when I did the piece up, I always envisioned, again, it was a vision from the Lord, that 
when we go to meet him, it's not going to be a very stiff, like a religious kind of ceremony. Or we go up there and he touches our head and says, oh, bless you, welcome into the kingdom. And we go in and put our wings on and there we are. It's not like that at all. We are his children. We are not only his children, but we're, it says Jesus is closer than any friend, closer than a brother. And I've always felt that connection with the Lord. So I always am pictured when I leave here and go up to heaven, that it's just going to be running up there and Jesus is going to be running as fast to me as I am to him and we're just going to embrace and just have a great time. And so I wanted to paint that for myself. And so I did. I started doing this painting. Now at this time I was doing mall shows and uh, this was back in oh, like the 80s where the mall shows were big when you did an art show. Now they have art shows that are outside. And they had them back there too, but the ones I was doing, and I was doing a tour with the artwork that I had. I've been painting now at this, this point, probably about 10, 12 years. And I was doing um, uh, painting in the mall, and that's the only place that I had. I was going from one mall to another mall. So the only chance I had to paint was inside the malls, because I didn't have time to go home and go over to the mall. So I'm in the mall, and I'm painting, and I'm doing this painting up. And I had all these people come around and they were saying, oh, I love the painting, I want to buy the piece. And I kept telling everybody, it's, it's not for sale. You know, the painting that I'm doing is something personal for me. It's, I, I want it for myself. I don't want to sell it. And, you know, I was getting all these disappointing looks from people, you know, they really wanted it and they'd walk away and da-da. And then after a while, and I mean, this was like one after another while I was painting this painting, the people coming up to me, Finally, one guy says, oh, I really want the painting. I said, well, it's not for sale, it's for me. I says, but, I says, if you want a copy of it, you know, I'll see about making reproductions and prints and you can have one of those. And he was like, oh, that's great, whatever. So we started making up a list and we had hundreds of names. By the end of that show, we had hundreds of names of people that wanted prints of that. So by the time I finished the painting, um, I went and made prints of it and it went all over the place and it took off big with, I was working with my publisher and it went all over the world actually. Um, but through all of that, it again brought me back to the point that stuff that we do, I wanted this painting, this was my painting. You know, it was something personal to me, but I had to let go of it and I had to give it to other people because it was for other people. And there's so many people that can relate to that piece. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, if not, you'll see it right here on the screen. Um, and this is something that has, that has touched people, and we, that's what we do. Matter of fact, you know, I was painting for the Lord for a number of years, maybe four or five years, and things were progressing, and things were my footprints in the sand was already out, and there's a whole bunch of other ones that took off and went worldwide, and. Um, I'm thinking, you know, well, I'm doing a really good job for the Lord, and I was happy where I was at, because I really wanted to please my God. And I was having a conversation with him, again, you know, just that prayer. When you're, when you're praying, that's what you're doing, you're having a conversation with God. And I was just praying with the Lord and just saying, you know, I thank you for, you know, blessing me so much, and, you know, that I could do my artwork and being an artist, because it's something that I enjoyed. There's nothing better than making a living out of something you love. And I hear from the Lord, again, that's in a voice saying, an artist, you think that's what you are as an artist? And I'm going, yeah, I think so, that's what I do, I paint. You know, I do paintings, I'm an artist. And he says, that really is not your calling. And I said, oh really, I'm supposed to be doing something else, I'm not supposed to be a doctor, a lawyer? And he says, no, he says, what you are is you're a medic. And as all he said, he never explained it, and what I had to do was really sit down and contemplate that and when I when I did I understood that what he's saying was exactly right a medic is somebody like if you're on the front lines okay and I wasn't on the front lines there's people that you know they go door to door and they witness and they grab people whatever those are people that are on the front lines my job was a medic that those people when they're up there and they're witnessing the people and talking to people and and trying to bring them to the Lord and there's a lot of times where people are really rejecting against them, they get beat up pretty bad by the world that's out there sometimes. 
by trying to preach the Word of God. And what I was was a medic in the background that after they left the front lines and was coming home, there would be a painting hanging up that would give them encouragement. It would, it would uplift them and, 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 you know, and encourage them, um, give them comfort when they needed it. And that's what a medic does. He patches up the wounds and they go back out on the front lines again. And he told me, that's what you are. And that's what we are. You know, if we give our gift to the Lord, I don't care if it's, if it's painting, if it's writing, you know, being an author, uh, whatever your gift is, when you give it to the, give it to the Lord, you're, you're, be, you're becoming a medic. You're helping people, you know, giving them comfort, giving them, you know, wisdom and, and being, you know, so that they, they know how to get closer to God. Yeah, you're repairing wounds and that's what we are. And you know, when, no matter how much we give to the Lord, He always gives back to us just even more than, than, than we can possibly imagine. I mean, that's, that's just His nature. And like I said, that's, that's, He was trying to show us that that's what we're supposed to do. I remember doing this one painting. Um, actually, there's a stories behind quite a few of them that the Lord has, but this one in particular, uh, it's called My Son, My Son. And when I did this painting, now I'm, again, like 12, it's just a little after I was doing the Welcome Home, right around that time period. And I'm thinking I'm right where the Lord wants me to be. I'm doing the paintings, they're getting published worldwide, and really doing a good thing for God. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm really right where the Lord wants me to be. And I hear him say, my people need meat. And I'm thinking, well, what do you mean by meat, you know? And if you think about it a lot, well, if I, when I thought about it, uh, a lot of the paintings that I did was, was very beautiful depiction of Christ and healings and stuff like this, but was very light and airy. He need, what he wanted me to do was to give more substance. It may not be such a, you know, a loving little painting, but it needed to be out there. And this was one of the pieces that he laid upon my heart. He gave me this vision of him on the cross or coming down from the cross and Mary just weeping over him and that whole drama thing and that, you know, that agony that Mary went through and, and you know, that God also went through to see his son, you know, having to go through all this. And when I started painting it, my first thought was, <laughs> I'm going, really, Lord, you want me to paint this? I don't really think it's going to sell that well. You know, who's, who's going to buy a painting that's, you know, almost kind of depressing in a way? But I felt led to do it. And that's why we need to follow the Holy Spirit. Even when we are thinking and, you know, the marketing doesn't sound right, we still have to follow the Spirit because He knows. The Lord knows the big picture. So I did. And again, I'm in a mall. I'm doing the painting. And there's like maybe 30 other artists scattered throughout the mall as well. I'm right dead in the center of the mall. And as I'm painting this painting, you know, you're painting, and I caught a glimpse off this corner of my eye of this girl, this lady, that was standing off in one corridor right on the edge over there and just leaning up against the wall and just watching me. And I didn't think much about it, just was wondering why she didn't get closer or, you know, if she wanted to watch do the, the painting, that was fine, but she just wanted to stay off on the side. And so I didn't pay it much mind. About a day or two goes by, it's toward the end of the show. And finally she comes up to me and she says, my name is so-and-so she says uh, you don't know me she said but she said your painting that you're painting right now saved my life and I'm gone really uh, I'd like to know about that and she said that the other day or yesterday actually the day before this she was in the mall and she was just so depressed that she was going to go out and commit suicide. She already had it planned out. She had everything laid out. It was, she was just gonna go and get it all done with. And I mean, she had the whole thing figured out. And she said she came by and she took another look at the painting and the Holy Spirit just grabbed her and just wouldn't let her go, wouldn't let her commit suicide. 
and she just started weeping and bawling at, at the painting. I wasn't there at the time, I was right at the end of the show. She came by that, that evening to go out and commit suicide. I was already gone. And she saw the painting and she said that she just couldn't do it anymore. And she said it was all because of this, the painting. And of course I explained to her that, well, it wasn't because the, the painting so great, it's because the Holy Spirit was working through that. And so I was rejoicing in that, me and my wife, and the next show that I had, this is with the same painting, the next show that I had was about 150, maybe 200 miles away. It was up in, um, that was Cincinnati. I had to go up to Indianapolis. And my next show was up there. I'm setting up into the next show, which is probably about three or four days later, and I'm in the middle of doing the show, and this guy comes through, a young guy, maybe 25, 27, and he says, you don't know me, and I'm going, I just heard that, you know, and he says, you don't know me, he says, but, he says, your paintings, not that painting in particular, but the paintings in general that I was doing, because I had, you know, all my, all the, the Christian paintings on display, he says, he says, your paintings, he says, have broken a barrier that nobody has broken before, he says, I'm a preacher's kid, he says, and I grew up in the church, I knew exactly what to say. I knew if somebody said this response, I know how to respond back and be in that Christian realm. He says, and I, I knew everything. He says, I had all my, my barriers put up. He says, all my defenses were in place. He says, if somebody says something, I know exactly what to say back without ever feeling it. He says, I was never accepted the Lord. He says, I was lost as anybody out there, but you would never know it because I had my defenses up. They said something and I had to say, oh, praise the Lord, da, da, da. And just, he says, I had it down pat. All my walls were up. He says, but these were auto, audible uh, walls. He says, I didn't have visual walls in place. He says, and I came into the mall, this, again, that Cincinnati, the same one that that gal um, didn't commit suicide in. And he says, and here was your paintings. He says, and they just hit me. He says, and I couldn't take my eyes off of them. He says, and he says, all of a sudden, he says, I just felt the Lord right around it. He says, and I gave my heart to the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. Gave my heart to the Lord right in, right in, that, in that mall as well. He says, I just had to come up here and tell you, you know, the, what your, your work is doing. And what I'm saying here is, if we give it to God, then he, he can use it and he can do some marvelous things with it, you know, but we have to give it to him first. And if we just paint for ourselves, what good is that? I mean, you know, you, as an artist or a writer for that matter, same thing. We have such a privilege because the work that we do is not like building a bridge or a skyscraper and we're gone and that's it. The work that we do not only can bring comfort and, and bring people to the Lord, but it will go on long after we're gone. We leave a legacy. The stuff, the work that we do is a legacy to, you know, to our children, to the world for that matter. I mean, you know, you don't know how long we're going to be here. I mean, I think that the Lord's coming soon, but still. If he tarries for another couple hundred years, the work we're doing now, I won't be here to tell people of Christ, but my work can. And again, if you're an author, and you know what you're writing on in your books, you may not be here, and you won't be here a couple hundred years from now if he tarries that long. But those words that are in those books will still be reaching people. The work that you're doing will still be working long after we're gone. It's such a privilege. I mean, you really have to think about that. The gifts that the Lord has given you, and it doesn't have to be in a visual sense. It can be the gift of love is a very big gift. People just, you know, don't think about that so much, but it is, the gift of love is, and I don't mean just loving something. I mean, there's certain things like, okay, you know, like maybe some sick children or something, people go, to the hospitals and they visit the children. Not everybody can do that. Everybody wants to do that. But you have to have a certain heart to be able to do that all the time and see all the agony and overcome that and still be with the children. That's a gift. 
any kind of gift that you have, if you give it to the Lord, He can use it and He will use it. So, you know, it's... When the Lord says, feed my sheep, now he's, He was talking to the apostles and, you know, and it was more of on a preaching realm. And He does that to a lot of ministers. Feed my sheep. And, you know, most of that is the Word of God. But, you know, you can do that in a number of different ways. You can do it, again, through writings, or you can do it through artwork. I've chosen artwork. In fact, I've had a lot of people say that the paintings that I've done were virtually sermons on campus. And I praise God for that. Because he was the, act, the, the, the master artist behind it all. He's used my hands but it was all his vision and he gives me that ability to do those paintings as a matter of fact i remember this one this one time in florida i was doing some sunsets and i think it was early on thank goodness because he corrected me way back then but i was doing some sunsets and i was at the point where i was really starting to hone my craft so i was getting pretty good at what i was doing even i could see that and so I was doing some of these sunsets and I just was finished these paintings and again I'm in the middle of the mall and there's like eh, maybe 40 people behind me and I could hear them, you know, the ooh and ah and everything else. I'm doing all these different colors and blendings and stuff like this. And I'm hearing it but I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to it. I finally stepped back a little, a little ways from it and just kind of critique my own work, see if it needed a little touch here, a little, you know, how the composition was going and so forth. And again, as I'm stepping back, I'm hearing all the people, you know, ooh, ah, that was beautiful, ah, yada, yada. And I had to get something in my van, which was outside in the parking lot. So I turn around and go out to the van to go get whatever it was that I needed in the van. And as I'm walking away, all of a sudden, my head starts getting bigger. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, Danny, you're pretty good. You're doing all right, kid. You're did a nice job, you do some nice work. And my head's getting bigger and bigger, I'm surprised I could get through the door to get outside. And I get outside, and lo and behold, as I'm going out in the parking lot to get into my van to get what the tool, whatever it is I need, as I go out there, here's the sunset going on. So I'm looking at the sunset as I'm walking toward the, the van, and it was beautiful, beautiful sunset. And so I'm looking at the sunset and in my mind, you know, the artist's mind, I'm tearing it apart. I'm saying, okay, you know, I see this color blending with that and this got a glow and this darkness there that pops this. I'm tearing the whole thing apart so that at some point I can recreate it again on canvas, you know, studying my, studying it. So I'm looking at all this and then all of a sudden I, I stop all that and I just was looking at him going, you know, as just as a, the beauty of it. And I remember <laughs> remarking, I remember saying, that's a really beautiful sunset. It was, it was a really pretty one. And I said, that's a really beautiful sunset. And I'll tell you what, it was almost, now this one was not from in here. I heard the Lord speak and I didn't feel it from in here. It was almost like I could hear it out of the heavens. It was that loud. And I heard the Lord say, and I'll never forget exactly what he said. I, I, like I said, I'm looking, I'm going, oh, that's a beautiful sunset. And I hear this voice, booming voice, and he says, that's right he says and don't you forget he's oh and he says that's right he said and I do this every day he says and don't you forget that the very best that you can possibly do is only a poor imitation of what I do every day and I'll tell you what, it was like God just smacked me and I was like whoa and I, my head shrunk back down to normal size again thank God and I'll tell you what, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever been puffed up after that. You know, I have a lot of people that, you know, say, oh, you work da 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 and I thank them, and I go on my way, and then I completely dismiss it, because I don't want it to turn into pride. I don't want it to develop into that. You know, it's not that I'm dismissing their compliments. I appreciate what they're saying, but I can't let it stay inside me, or it'll ferment into pride and then God can't use me. And he told me that a long time ago too. He said, if you're going to be proud, if you're gonna have pride, I can't use you. And, and that's true. And that's why, probably why it's been such a worldwide thing. But 
you know, when you're, when you're using your craft, keep in mind, feed my sheep. And whatever it is that you're doing, you know, the, the paintings that you're doing, the music you're writing, um, you know, or, or writings themselves, whatever gift it is that you're giving to, going to produce, you're feeding people. And just think of what it is that you're feeding. Is it just something that tastes good for a while and is going to melt away? Or is it some real substance, like something from the Lord, that will last with them forever and go on way beyond past when we're dead? Our work, the work that we do, will outlive us and still be blessing people if it's done for the Lord.